GT3 racing is one of the most popular motorsports categories in the world, and for good reason. The cars are easy to drive, but they're difficult to master. So, let's see how this Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 gets on at Circuit Thermalito. As part of the Circuit Thermalito leaderboard series, every two weeks I'll be taking a different car as picked by the legends on Kickstarter who made building this circuit possible and attempting to set my best time in just 30 minutes. Then I'll be throwing the challenge over to you to come and beat my time, with the winner for each car taking their place on the official Circuit Thermalito leaderboard. This time we have Matt Webb to thank for his pick of the Merc, which is actually just base content in a set of Corsa. No mod required, but links are down in the video description for the circuit and the 24-7 hotlap server hosted by Just Race. Now I already know that my lap isn't going to be anywhere near as quick as what Matt can do, especially when he starts playing around with the setup and he has more than half an hour on track, but that doesn't mean I can't give it my best shot. So the first thing I want to point out about this Mercedes is that it is an older Mercedes, it's an older model. Now obviously this is one of the base cars that came with the Seto Corsa back when that released in 2014 I think it was. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I probably am, but I think it's 2014. It was kind of new back then, but obviously a Seto Corsa has been out for a while now, so this car has also been out for a while. This thing, despite being the best part of 15 years old now, is absolutely planted. Not in the same sense that it's full of aerodynamic grip, but the stability in this thing is really, really impressive. Like, it just handles the weight so nicely through the corners. You haven't got any of that unpredictability when you're really pushing towards the limit. It's very friendly, very forgiving, very trustworthy kind of car to drive, which is exactly what you want as a as a racing driver, specifically a hot lapper. You know, something that you can push lap after lap after lap in a predictable manner and you can really find out where those tents are and get those extra tents in theory of course. I mean there's always there's always an extra few set of tents that we can always get, right? I mean, if we look at the pure numbers, I mean, it's got a whopping big engine, 6.2 litre V8. I mean, you don't really see those kind of things anymore. You know, all the engines are becoming a lot smaller, a lot more efficient, a lot more future-proofed, for want of a better word. You don't get things that sound like this anymore, really. Well, you do, but not quite the same. You know, you've got your Bentleys and your screaming Porsches, but there's just something about that low growl of the Mercedes that just, it kicks you in the chest. 520 horsepower as well. Although you got over 1200 kilos of weight to carry, so it doesn't break anywhere near as good as the Radical that we took out last time. But I guess we were kind of spoiled with that car, to be honest with you. This is, this is definitely more conventional. This is what you'd expect, you know, braking just before the 100 meter markers in most instances. I found this car, it responds really well to on-throttle like rotations, so through the middle of a corner you might not be able to carry as much speed if you had massive wings, but when you get to the middle just gradually feed it in, getting the rear turning, getting the rotation dialed into the car, and you can kind of maintain that. It's not really a slide, it's not really a drift. It feels like it's steering from the rear, which is... It does take a little bit of getting used to, you know, it's not something you can just jump in and go, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna floor this car and get a record lap time. It takes you a few laps to get confidence in it that, okay, well, this is how I drive it now. It's definitely, definitely all in the rear of the car on power. But then again, the front of this car is pretty long, so maybe it's just because it feels like you're in the back of the car to begin with. You know, there's, there's all that bonnet up ahead of you. Oh, sounds good in the tunnel. Now the suspension in this thing is actually really nice, it just eats up those curbs. Even the red sausage curbs, way more than you would expect. Although the car is pretty wide, I found myself on several occasions just tapping into the fence and just taking a bit too much curb because well, the, the, uh, the width of the car is a bit more than I imagine it to be, and I'm taking up more space than I realise. But for example, this first chicane, you've got to be a little bit earlier on the brakes than you would expect to be normally, but you can really just throw it in, bounce off and 
what you're aiming to do is take the line of least resistance, and this is a car that, that lets you do that. It lets you get up on those curbs and not really lose too much time in the process either. I know, for example, the Radical from last week, I know I've mentioned it a few times already and I keep on going on about it, but you really couldn't attack the red sausage curbs in that car. It would kind of bounce the car and throw it wide, whereas here, in the Mercedes, you've got more track to use, which is just going to give you more confidence again. The wider the track feels, the you know, the wider you can turn in, the more corner speed you can take, the more speed you can take on exit because you don't have to keep the car hemmed into the track limits as tightly. Although, you know, track limits are definitely a thing. This chicane, for example, specifically, you got to be real careful with that on your hot laps. But no, it's a, it's a really nice car to drive. It's it's a GT3. What do you expect? It's not going to kill you. With the traction control, with the ABS, it's designed for the gentleman driver. It's designed for the mass market of racers, so to speak. And like I said in the intro, GT3 is popular for a reason. Because it's not the most difficult car to drive in the world. But you've always got to find those extra few tenths, and that's where the difference comes in. It's all in the driving technique. I was kind of sad when my time ticked over in my uh, in my run because I was thinking every lap is quicker than the last one. It just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. And um, it was actually the last lap of the session. I mean, it was only like a tenth a lap at the time I was improving by, but every lap was faster. The tires were hanging on, the fuel was coming down, the grip was staying there in the car. It was just a very trance-like experience. You could just keep on pushing and keep on going. So I've got no doubt that you guys who are going to be giving this a go over the next week and a half or so, you... <laughs> You're probably going to spend quite a few hours on it. So let's roll the tape, as they say, and have a look at the hot lap and see what this can put on the board. And don't forget, if you want to watch the full, unedited 30 minute run, then that is available to all DDF Racer channel members. So, heading towards the line here at Circuit Thermolito 6.2 litres of meaty Mercedes goodness. Heavy braking down into Eaglecott Junction, turn one, and it's wide! Bit of a slide there, that's compromised turn two. A little bit of room on the barrier there on exit, heading up the demo straight towards turn three, brown bend. Nice and stable though. Nice and stable, not even a hint of a slide. Nice and neat over the kerbs. Bit of understeer there, pushing wide, but that's not too bad. Looking pretty good so far. And across the top of Mokang Drive here, heading towards turn eight, hall corner. Can't take too much speed, letting a bit wiggly on entry in the steering wheel there. Terrible visibility from this camera here, but that's not really the issue here. The issue is how much grip does this car have? Oh, kicking up a bit of dust on the inside though. Very close to the barriers, bit of a wiggle on power. But over the crest and onto the sticky straight. Time for a little rest. Sun in the eyes, dirty windscreen. Quite early braking there into the Hunter loop, but absolutely planted, kept him nice and tight early on the power, and uh, yeah, building up the speed all the way down the Abaddon straight again. Plenty of speed in this car. Impressive speed considering it's such a short straight. Bit of curb on entry, front brake discs glowing, bit wide through Binsberg and though that compromised Jorensen into the second tunnel. And nice and close to the inside though. But pushing wide again on exit. Looks like a bit of understeer here, unfortunately. Breaking into the power loop. Flames spitting out nice and tight. Getting the power down again. You really want to try and straight line the exits in this car as much as possible to get the power down. Into the Nauman Herpen. Nice wide entry there. Which again straight lines this part of the S's here. Henrik 1, Henrik 2. Into Naptic and feel there's a bit of grass on the inside. Not quite flat, but could have been faster. Plenty of room. Almost at the end of the lap now. Bergen bend and through the final corner of the rangy kink back onto the main straight again. Definitely looked quite stable, looked quite under control. But was it fast? Well, there's only the one reference point available on the Thermalito leaderboard so far, and that is the Radical SR3 XXR from the first challenge in this series. Although the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that the time on the right-hand side of the screen right now does look slightly different than the one posted in the video. That's because Matt Webb, as part of the community challenge over the past few weeks, has gone and set a blistering 202.497, which is about a second faster than I managed. So my best effort in the Mercedes is a 202. 2.687, which is actually slower than the Radical, but I suspect that when you guys have a go and when some of the aliens get on the hot lap servers, that might go to the top ahead of the Radical, but 
time will tell. You've now all got until this time to get on the Hotlap server and set your best time, with the best time being included on the official Thermalita leaderboard that we just saw, although to be honest my money is still on Matt Webb because this is his car choice and if he's not fastest at his own car choice then what even is he doing? <laughs> anyway, all of the links that you need are down in the video description to Circuit Thermalito, to the 24-7 Hotlap server hosted by Just Race, and my Discord server to keep up to date with all the event chat and all of your competitors in between the events. Have fun!